Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the latest and greatest installment of SGA Live, coming to you each and every week, twice a week, uh, during the common hour, or what would have been on campus. That's Tuesday at 11 o'clock and Thursdays at 3 o'clock. It's our weekly show or our twice weekly show where the members of the SGA are able to have a conversation with the community around various topics of interest. It's a new program that we've created for this pandemic reality that we're living in um, as a way to connect our community, uh, keep in touch with each other, share information, but most importantly, try to continue to build and commit to that sense of community that, that we all love and miss uh, now that we are no longer able to be in the building. I am your moderator, Nestor Melendez, Director of Student Leadership and Camp Life and advisor to the Student Government Association. Uh, uh, bring you up to speed on all of the latest things that are happening at Gutman. So um, let's share some content so we all get on the same page, and then we'll get to our wonderful presentation. So if you're watching from your um, or on your cell phone or your tablet or your smart device, your mobile technology. This is the screen that talks about the census. A lot of people have made a this CUNY definitely has. As we ask people to please make sure that you have filled it out. This is about getting the right amount of money for the number of people that live in the various communities in and around not only New York City, New York State, but also the United States of America. <clears throat> but it's our opportunity to make sure that much needed funding finds its ways to the programs that help the people. The further important thing that you all could do is if you are eligible to register to vote, please register to vote. May 29th is the deadline to register on cuny.edu forward slash vote. Uh, so this is for all of you CUNY students. The portal is there. Use it. Go to your CUNY first. Sign up with your credential, and then click on the on the on the screen there and get yourself registered to vote. And help us make the changes that are necessary in order to move our nation forward. Um, these programs are brought to you uh, by the Office of Student Engagement. And as you look at your screen right now, this is a number of the staff members who are missing greatly the students and their interactions with them. So you're gonna see there some of our peer mentor staff, some of our academic advising and student success, the Dean of Students. Um, here's another picture of the staff so that you can see who all is missing you. And there's some folks from accessibility services, some of our SSAs and our CSAs. And finally, the last picture to show you is some more of our staff from Accessibility Services again. Um, and we just miss you. You know, we hope that everybody's fine and doing well. Um, and if you're not, please meditate, right? So this is a, a meditation sign up that you can do. Um, but if you feel like you need to do something with, with your body, then we have virtual yoga. Every Tuesday is a new video, and you just go to this website here, uh, tinyurl.com forward slash Gutman Yoga Videos, and you'll be able to work on your chakra alignment, um, which is good and fun. Um, but also, if you need to check on your mental health, we ask that you please visit the uh, screening.mentalhealthscreening.org forward slash GCC Wellness. It's free, it's quick, it's anonymous. Um, and as always, you can email our wellness at gutman.cuny.edu uh, for help that you may need. Okay, so that being said, that's it for the announcements at the beginning of this thing. And we wanted to get the housekeeping out of the way uh, so we could get to the nitty gritty, which is always is a conversation with our beautiful Student Government Association staff. Uh, these are the students that have stepped up in the to create the space for you. And so today we bring to you the amazing, the 
uh, super futuristic, right? Because, you know, she's forward thinking. Uh, Clarissa Intriago. Clarissa, how are you today? Hi. I am a little bit nervous, but I'm excited for this presentation. <laughs> All right. So as we get ready to, to move into so why don't you, uh, before we introduce you, uh, which I know you're going to do in the pre your presentation, let's talk about why this topic. What, what about uh, this idea of international student perspectives uh, made you feel like you wanted to talk about it? Well, I wanted to talk about this topic because um, besides being something that I went through a lot, like several times, I feel like our students, like amongst our community, there were a lot of students who uh, had the same experience, and I feel like this was a topic that would um, actually connect us all and kind of like, you know, make us feel related to each other. So yeah, that was, you know, my main reason why I wanted to talk about this. Yeah, so it, it, it very definitely uh, focuses in on this, on this theme of community and building community. And, and one of the things that we, we brag at Gutman is that we are a global uh, community, a global Gutman community, if you will. And, and so you certainly represent that. Why don't we just move into your presentation and, and, and take us on this, on this journey? All right. So I'm going to share a presentation right now. Um, give me a second. Uh, can, can you see it? Can everybody see it, by the way? Okay. So I'm going to start talking about differences in American education and culture from an international perspective. So before I talk about this topic, um, uh, an international reference, I'm going to use my home country, which is Ecuador. And um, I just want to say that this is my experience. It can vary from person to person, but um, what I'm about to share is through you know, my own experience, through my eyes, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna start talking about me a little bit. I, so I was born in the United States, but I was mostly raised on Ecuador. Um, I moved there when I was six years old. So um, yeah, I'm a second year student majoring in business administration. I am going to transfer to Baruch with the major on international business. I am the treasurer of the student government. And just a random fact, just to put that out there, I'm the oldest out of three siblings and I'm a cat person. Like I actually like cats. So let's start by talking about American education versus international. So some, some things that they have in common is that students have access to education, whether it's from a private uh, institution or a public institution. Um, they both have um, some standardized tests that students must prepare, whether it's from, you know, middle school, high school, or, you know, college. They both try to educate to their best abilities. They try to use, you know, as much resources as they have, whether it's upgrading the way they teach, um, the professors, or, you know, everything in general. Um, the educational materials, as in the topics that they teach, are very similar. For example, like, you know, the same thing that you learn here in the United States about the chemistry is the same thing you're going to learn in a different country. Like, you know, that really be changed, if that makes sense. Um, so when it comes to the differences, so American education and the international education, in which in this case is my home country, Ecuador, they both center in their own history. So American uh, America in general, right? They're big to when it comes to like teaching about like you know like what the U.S. have done has done in the past and what they're doing right now and stuff. They don't really focus on like a more international aspect. Like you don't get to learn that as much. Uh, but you know that happens in every single country. So that's like something that I had to go through. So for example, when I moved here, um, I actually did like sophomore year here of high school, and I remember during the interview. Um, the lady said that whatever I learned in history here is correct. Like, I cannot, like, stand up and say, like, you know, that's wrong or whatever. Cause that, that's what is being thought here, if that makes sense. Um, a difference that I noticed is that there is more money spent on students in America rather than in some international countries. For example, the U.S. is very big to when it comes to giving us financial aid compared to uh, other countries such as my home. In my home country, you do get help, but it's very little to none. So, uh, you know, the third difference is academic skills versus student growth. 
So the United States is very um, a little bit harsh when it comes to academic skills. They're very like, you know, like you got to strive in your education. You got to have good grades. Like if you want to go to this one, let's say Ivy League college, you know, you have to have the certain scores versus like student growth. Um, yes, the United States, they do have like, you know, like activities that you can do, like, you know, recreational activities and stuff. But um, sometimes I feel like that's not the main focus. Like, you know, like there's like certain institutions that they don't really have that much or like students are not really interested versus other international countries that even though they can be harsh with academic skills, they, they kind of like told their students to do like much more than only like academic stuff. Um, another big difference, this is uh, something that I wanted to share, is the interaction between students and their professors. Um, one thing that I noticed is that in my home country, in Ecuador, they were pretty strict when it came to respecting your professor. Your professor. Like, you were not able to talk back to them. Um, you know, you were very respectful. But when I came here to um, to the United States, I noticed that I don't, maybe this is not normal. Maybe this is just my experience. I noticed that um, some students will actually, like, reply back to the professor, but not in a respectful way. Like, they would just basically talk back. Or um, they would just kind of, like, uh, leave they would just like leave you know the class like randomly like i don't know I, I just find that kind of odd um another difference is their resources in their institutions such as guidance counselors and many others so through my experience um on my home country we don't really have like you know like a guidance counselor we don't have like a main professor that will look over a cohort but it wouldn't be like a guidance counselor or like you know like somebody who can we actually talk to you about our academic stuff. So I feel like um, if I have to put that out there, I feel like the United States have more support in that aspect rather than in other countries. Um, again, I'm just using my home country as an example. It, this can vary per country. Um, I, I feel like 0.5 and 0.6, they both tie it up. So, you know, the amount of support is different. So another different thing that I experienced was how serious is physical education, you know, the PE course. So in my home country, they will actually make us like, you know, run a lot, they would actually make us exercise. You couldn't really complain about that. Like you couldn't like, if you were sick, then they will let you go. But if you were not, you were like, you had to actually do that. But I feel like here in the United States, like they don't really like, you know, actually force you to do like people will like, in my experience, right, I would see people complaining just because they had to, like, literally just run a bit. So it, I feel like in the United States, it's not taken as serious as in other countries. I don't know if it's because of the space or, um, you know, like, I don't know. I don't I really don't know why, but, like, at least that's my experience. Again, I only study here in New York, so maybe New York that and other countries or um, other states are not like that. Uh, another difference, which is big, and it was a huge impact for me, was the public the public school costs. So in my country, public high schools and public universities, you don't have to pay. Um, maybe you will have to pay like your inscription, but that's it. But here in the United States, even if you go to a public, you know, institution, you still have to pay. So I don't. I thought like the meaning of public was like, oh, maybe you don't have to pay or like you know but you still have to pay. So, you know, that's a different thing. And I think uh, the last difference was that, so in my home country, I was not really able to see that uh, diversity in students. You know, it was mostly, you know, people from my region. Um, we didn't have like foreigners that much. Um, I guess it, it was because my country was small and, you know, but um, here in the United States, you do see a lot of international students like myself. So, um, you know, that's kind of like a big difference. Um, you know, maybe this is different in other countries, but in my country, like, I really didn't see that much foreigners. Um, so, yeah. So now we're going to talk about, um, now we're going to talk about American culture versus international culture. And just as a disclaimer, um, this is my experience and this is what I noticed. Maybe I'm missing something and, you know, if I do, just let me know. Um, but okay. So for similarities, um, I see that 
both in the American culture and international culture, there's like a family, they're like family oriented. Like, you know, like they put, um, they put their families like, you know, a lot of attention and, you know, they stick with each other. Um, both of them have their own holidays and celebration, you know, like international students from the country have their own celebrations and the United States has their own celebration, you know, like, I think what we might have in common is like, for example, Christmas, like, you know, some countries celebrate Christmas and some, some don't, but the United States do so. And another similarity that I found is their love for food. I noticed that American people, um, just as anybody else in the world, they love food. So, um, you know, they're very big in food. So I noticed more differences rather than similarities. So maybe, you know, if I'm missing something, let me know. So for differences, I noticed that um, in international culture, they're very, um, they're very like, oh, sorry. They're very like traditional in their own ways. Um, you know, like, you know, I feel like the United States doesn't have that much like, you know, like tradition. Um, but other cultures, they're like pretty strong when it comes to it. Um, another difference that I notice is that like, again, I'm using my culture as, you know, as a international, you know, example. So in my culture, we're, we're very like, um, we show physical affection. Like, you know, when you say hi, like you kind of like, um, you, you know, you kind of hug your friend and, you know, you just kind of like physically close and that stuff, but I feel like in the United States, there's a lot of, like, you know, distancing when it comes in, in that into play. Um, another difference that I noticed, again, maybe I don't, but this is what I have seen through my experience, um, it's the way how we treat our elderly. Um, so, the, so I noticed in the United States, um, most families tend to use, uh, when, it came, when it comes to taking care of their older, whether it's their grandfather or their, you know, their mom or dad, they're already old. They tend to send them to like homes and that's how they take care of them maybe because they're too busy or maybe that's the way their culture is but i feel like for hispanic people um to uh like kind of like still have them at home like it's hard for us to like you know put them at homes so, like we don't we just don't want to do that because you know we just don't that's not part of our culture if that makes sense like we rather keep them around and take care of them ourselves um when I another difference is that um, how we interact. Like uh, I feel like at least in my like my Hispanic community, like you're able to connect a little bit faster. Like you know, we're kind of like I don't know more like hype. Like I don't know if this makes sense, but um, we just kind of like we're able to relate like click faster better than American people because I feel like American people is kind of like mostly to themselves rather than actually like interact. Again, this varies per person and, and you know, and everything else. Um, yeah, so is there any questions regarding that? Yes, there's absolutely yeah. questions. Um, so as I, as I listen to, to your chat, the, the first thing that comes to mind is the concept of culture shock, um, which while you were born in the U.S., you were raised in Ecuador, so uh, you were probably too young to pick up many of the, the cultural affect of American uh, society culture um, when you picked up the Ecuadorian stuff. So, like, when you came over, how old were you? So I was always bouncing back and forth. Um, I came to the U.S. when I was six years old. And I lived here till I was like 14. No, I mean, I lived on Ecuador till I was like 14. And then I came back. And then I lived here for a year. And then I went back and came back when I was like 17. So I was like bouncing back and forth. Yeah. So, so there was opportunities for you to see the differences almost bouncing back and forth. Yes. So, and, and you can stop sharing the application so that we can see. Oh, okay. But <laughs> so right now, uh, from Ecuador, who call a cousin, a friend, a, a family uh, a member, is saying like my my youngest is about to come to America to start school. What would you say to them to prepare them 
for that transition? Like, what would be the first things that you would say to them, get ready for this? Well, if, if they're coming specifically to New York, I will tell them to be careful about uh, people's attitude because sometimes I notice that they have like a certain, you know, like attitude. Everybody's like minding their own business and that can come out as rude, but they're not actually rude. That's the way they are. Um, I would say um, for them, I don't know. I think that's that would be my first advice. And then my second advice is that the way how things are here, they're very different. Like, I feel like here in the United States, your life is a routine. But in our countries, especially in my home country, you're able to kind of like, you know, move your routine, like whatever you want. You're able to modify it a little bit like easier rather than here. So I would just tell them to kind of like be open minded as well. I feel like some countries, especially if you're very traditional, you're close minded. But the United States, they're like, um, you know, like very open minded, I think. So I would just tell them if they're rich. The open mindedness is is uh, is uh, for specific things, right? Because yeah, we're learning things. right now that there's sadly a lot of intolerance and bigotry and pe prejudice and you know that kind of stuff. But for the purposes of this discussion, I think where you're planting it, um, yeah, America is an open minded, forward thinking, very industrious kind of a culture. Like we're always trying to do something and get something done. And I think it's important that you point out that coming to New York yes. is different than, say, uh, San Diego or, or uh, Miami, Florida, um, or you know Indiana or something like that. Um, and while there are other cultural centers, like Chicago is very similar in makeup to New York, it's a very different kind of uh, a lifestyle there as well. Do you have a preference? Like right now, if I were to say you gotta pick one, Clarissa, and this is the only one that you're gonna have for the rest of your life, would you would you pick Ecuador? Would you pick the U.S. today? Honestly, uh, this is a question I get uh, very often from my friends and every. Um, I that's a really tough question. I don't even know how to answer it because the United States has um what I call like opportunities, like you know, like a better economy and you know, like. Um, I would say like more professional development rather than my country. So it depends on the aspect. Like if you tell me like, oh, like which type of lifestyle would you like to have? I would say I would like to have my chill lifestyle, which is on my home country rather than here, that everything is like fast paced. So I don't know. It depends. Maybe, I don't know how to answer that. Maybe both. I don't know. So that's cheating because you had to. I can't. But I got it. Each one has its own advantages and disadvantages yes. um in terms of when when you go back to ecuador do you find that people are asking you a million questions about life in the states do they want to just be around you and, and get a, a sense of that exposure or do they stay away from you because you are a gringa for all intents and purposes like does that happen to you um I, I, I mean, like, you know, like, you always have your friends that they're teasing you because you you don't remember, like, certain stuff that you used to do or certain, like, um you know, like, words. Like, you, you don't understand what they mean anymore and stuff. But uh, I wouldn't say that my friends, like, kind of, like, push me away because of that. Um, you know, I they still stick around me. Um, they do ask me, like, oh, like, what, it, like, if they have any questions, like, regarding, like, oh, like, so, you know, um, how's the education over there? Like, you know, like, certain stuff like that or other topics. But otherwise, not really. Like we do compare, like certain, like if the topic comes up, we do com we do make um comparison. But um, otherwise, not really. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So we, you know, looking at some of the comments that people are putting in. So uh, Michelle is co-signing on stuff that you're saying. Joanna, yeah. Poland, and and you know, so this was around physical education and how big of a deal it is uh, in their countries. Uh, Joanna's point that food equals love in, a, in many cultures. Uh, yes. I, I love food. But, you know, uh, food definitely is one of the ways in which we, we, we come together uh, when we share meals with each other. Um, do you cook Ecuadorian food at home, uh, you know, currently? is Or are you, like, uh, strictly American diet over there? What's going on? Um, 
I would say since, because my mom uh, actually just moved from my home country. So since she came now, we're actually, you know, eating like Ecuadorian food. She's trying her best because like the United States doesn't have the, the exact materials that we need. But, um, you know, I could say that we're trying to. Um, yeah, we, we're currently making Ecuadorian food. Otherwise, like, you know, before before she moved, I didn't, I wasn't actually connected in that sense. Like, what, what are some examples of things that you're eating right now that, that are considered Ecuadorian? So uh, there was something that I hadn't eaten, uh, you know, because I didn't have the chance to, but there's this thing we have called ceviche. So, you know, my mom is actually <laughs> trying to do it. I mean, she tried. Um, so, yeah, that's like something from my home country that. Now, ceviche know. is one of my favorite dishes of all time. Yeah. Which is it's, it's a seafood, so it's a fresh seafood, typically served mm. cold. Yes, uh, yes. It has shrimp in it, mm. white mm -hmm. fish, pulpo, mm -hmm. uh, corn, uh, and depending on the size I put in it, sometimes it's a very heavily lemon sauce. Yes. Sometimes it's a coconut-based broth that it's in. Uh, some people serve it with a little sweet potato on the side and the, and the big hard corn. Um, although that tends to be more Peruvian ceviche than Ecuadorian. Yeah, ceviche. yeah, <laughs> but um, it's it's very similar, actually. So who who do you um, think has the better ceviche, Ecuador or Peru? Ecuador, definitely Ecuador. I don't know, like my <laughs> favorite. Is it? <laughs> um, I think Ecuadorian food very time consuming. Polish food takes a lot of time to make and. I've had Polish food, especially kielbasa. Some of my favorite uh, is kielbasa and sauerkraut, which is basically Polish sausage with spices and stuff in it. Um, and luckily, that doesn't take a lot of time to cook. But there's other stuff. So what about Ecuadorian food? Is, is that taking forever? Or are you? Mm, well, I'm, I'm usually, this is going to sound a little bit embarrassing, but I'm not the one who does it. But from what I've noticed, <laughs> It, is, um, it depends on the way you do it and, you know, the materials that you have. Like, uh, you know, you can cook it on your normal stove or you can actually, you know, like, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but, like, there's people in the countryside that they actually cook, like, on wood, like, you know, like, on fire and stuff. So that would take a little bit longer. It depends on what you do and, like, you know, what materials you use. I would say it takes average, average time. Not that long, not too, you know, fast. In terms of similarities, I, I believe, and I could be mistaken here, I've never been mm. to Ecuador. Um, so in New York, we have New York yes. City. Yes. And we, many of us in this chat know what that's like. But we also have upstate New York, which is the mountains, the rivers, the lakes, the farms. Um, then we have suburban New York, which is houses separated by lawns. Um, and space. Let's talk about what Ecuador looks like, or at least where you come from. Uh, what, what, which part of Ecuador are you from? Are you from the city? Are you from the mountains? Are you from by the sea? Okay, so to I feel like I'm teaching um, geography. So Ecuador is divided in three parts. You know, the coast, uh, I don't know how to say this in English, but La Sierra and, you know, like La Amazonia, which is like jungle part. So the region that I specifically come from is from the coast. It's called Manavi. We are actually like kind of like near the water. And so like as any other, you know, countries, you're always going to have the countryside in a city. So, um, you know, like I came from the city, but I will often be on the countryside because my dad will take me there. So like, you know, in the city, you will see like the houses, like the, you know, the condos and stuff. But if you go to the countryside, you will see like houses made of like, I will say, I don't know, like Tanya, like, you know, like, like wood and stuff, um, I don't know, like, like that. I mean, I think it's any city, like any country has their own countryside and their own like city parts, if that makes sense. Of course it makes um, It has to, because you're saying it. So <laughs> outside of the chill factor, what do you miss the most from Ecuador? And that comes to you from LJ, like parts of, of home. Uh, I think what I miss the most, I think it will, I don't know, this is going to sound a little bit corny, but I think I miss, um, I miss my friends and I miss my family. Um, I would say I miss the food. 
like, yeah, my mom is able to make it. But like, if you go to a restaurant that the lady has been spending years doing it, it's very different. Um, I also miss the fact that in my country, we actually have like, you can, you're able to actually go to the beach and actually, you know, swim without feeling like the water is dirty or like you shouldn't be doing that in comparison to New York. Um, yeah, I will say I, I kind of miss that. And I miss like not having like, um, you know, my, my uh, the city that I come from, like there's places that they're very crowded, but here in New York is crazy. Like, you know, like when, like rush hour and stuff, like I kind of miss not having like those crowds, those crazy crowds. And um, yeah, I will say that's what I miss the most. Okay, so outside of shady beaches as being dirty and unswimmable, um, I can I can I can see that that, that there's a certain allure. Um, so when we say going home, yes, uh, like, like when 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 you're talking to your to your people and you say, "I'm going home," is is home currently where you live or is home Ecuador? Like, do you make that distinction? <laughs> Okay, so um, again, this is a question I get often too. Uh, before I used to have, I like since I was bouncing back and forth, uh, my uh, definition of home kind of changed. Um, I would say home is where my closest family is to me, meaning like my mom and my sisters, and you know like my dad. So I think that's the definition of home. We can be like, this is an example. We can be in China, but like as long as I have them, that will be my home. Like, it's not about the country, but it's about my family, like, you know, just sharing that space together. Very good. Any 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 designs on moving back to Ecuador, or are you American-based uh, now? Um, I would say when it comes to me making my life there, I would say I wouldn't, like, move. But uh, I definitely still plan to visit my friends and, like, you know, visit like as often as I can, but like to make my life there, I don't think that's part of my plans right now. Okay. And so for for the listening audience and the people joining us on this chat, if like tomorrow they lift the sanctions and we can we can leave our houses and go back into the world and all of a sudden people save their stimulus checks and had the opportunity to buy a ticket and go to Ecuador. What would be like the top three places that they should go see on that journey? Okay, so I, I have to correct myself because geographically I said that my country was divided in three. It's actually divided in four. Um, we actually have like, um, well, it's basically like an island. It's called Galapagos, which is a very like touristic place. Um, I would say that's one of the main three places that you should go. You should go to the island. You know, there's a lot of like, you know, like, um, you know, like a lot of animal species and, you know, that stuff, it's, it's actually fun. I think that's what our country is known for at international, I think. Um, another place that you can just go, it, it's really up to you. Like, again, my country has like mountains, um, it has, you know, jungles, it has the island. So it depends on what, like, what, where do you want to explore? Do you want to go to the jungle? Do you want to go to the mountains? Do you want to go to islands? So I think it's actually up to you. I don't know the names, like, you know, by memory. But I'm pretty sure if you go there and somebody's gonna tell you. <laughs> That's okay. All right, so we're coming up on the three uh almost four hour, and this is about the time yeah. that we start wrapping up. So la last thoughts that you want to share with, with the crowd at home, you know, the ten people that are on the chat with us. This is a, a pretty good turnout for uh SGA Live, and we certainly again want to thank Adrian, Andrea. Edwin, Joanna, Christina, Latoya, uh, Michelle, Sonia Reina has joined us just now. So last minute thoughts, final thoughts. I think, I think it would say, like, I think it's like, I think I have four points to say. I think um, wherever you go, whenever, like, wherever you go, you're always going to have your culture um, present. Um, I feel like you should know a lot about your culture because there's going to be people that they're going to be asking you. So might as well, you know, be aware of that. Um, being an international student, like um, sometimes it can be very difficult because sometimes you might not have that support that you want or you might not connect with other fellows. So I feel like if you ever see an international student, you know, struggle and that stuff, make sure to actually like, you know, guide them somewhere. Um, it's, 
it's a very fun but very hard experience to kind of like be bouncing from culture to culture like you know to country to country so again you know help those people you know guide them somewhere and um yeah that, that's pretty much it yeah i don't think i have anything else to say you have a lot to say and and, and, <laughs> and um uh you taking the time to have this conversation with us. Um, I want I want to say you know on behalf of of anybody that's listening to. Uh, uh, hold on one second. My daughter to um, Disney, and for some reason the phone keeps going to um, to Bluetooth. So we got to turn off the Bluetooth. Turn off Bluetooth. So welcome to something you didn't think was going to happen in the chat. Is <laughs> Bluetooth uh, conversion. All right. There you go. All right. So that being said, thank you for taking the time to take us on a little bit of a journey into the experiences of an international student here in the United States. Um, certainly perspectives to think about as we as we continue to grow as, as students as students who come from different areas, even if you're born in the States, um, you can have some different experiences of the world and it can it can shape how you in different spaces. Um, and we gotta be cognizant of that. Um, I love your message of reaching out to an international student who may be feeling homesick, who may be missing home, who maybe needs to make a connection. Um, one of the things that I think we can pride ourselves on at government is that we, we are a close-knit community. We, we do interact and check on each other and all that kind of good stuff. So um, I think that's that's uh, uh, to, to keep in mind. Um, I highly recommend traveling, especially back to our home countries, you know, the places yeah. where, where our families were born, our parents certainly. Um, as children, for me that's Puerto Rico, uh, and I've I've been lucky and blessed to be able to go back and and to experience Puerto Rico as a child, uh, to experience it as a teenager, to experience it as a like a, as a as an adult, to now experience it as like a, a father, very different experiences of of my island, um, and I love each and every one what they provided. So I you know if possible because I know I'm speaking from privilege. Mm. You have an opportunity to go back to the places that we call home, at least spiritually, emotionally. Be cognizant of like who you're showing up at, right? Because Clarissa at four years old Ecuador is different than Clarissa at 20 years old, and it's gonna be different than Clarissa like at 27, 30 years old. Yes, very different. You know the way I think, the way I act. It it kind of does influence you in a in a way. Wrap this up for today. We want to thank everyone for taking the time to be with us. Again, it's a small fraction of the day where we get to build community and, and kind of escape the, the, the repetition <laughs> of this damn quarantine. Um, I feel like every day is the same damn day. Uh, but today yeah. is Thursday, May 7th. Um, and so earlier this week, we had May the 4th be with we had Cinco de Mayo or Revenge of mm -hmm. the Red for those of us that are Star Wars nerds. What were you going to say? Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, like, for me, it's funny every single Cinco de Mayo, but because besides being the Mexico Independence Day, um, for me, it's like the day that I came to the United States, you know, to start my life. Wow. So I celebrate, like, you know, that time. Oh, it's like a birthday. Yeah, it's like a birthday if you didn't say so. That's the time nice. I actually came here. Nice. So happy birthday. Cinco de Mayo is now another reason to celebrate um, the Battle of Puebla, where our Mexican brothers uh, fought back against the, the colonizers for their independence and actually won that battle. Um, and it's not the only battle that the Mexicans have won against the colonizers. Their history is all kinds of amazing stories of them fighting back uh, uh, the English, uh, and the, the the Americans, but that's a conversation for another day. Because yeah, you <laughs> know, um, we reached the end of SGA Live episode. I want to say this is like nine. Um, 
Then next week, we're going to be featuring SGA President Edgar Cecilio. Uh, we're going to be talking about the year in review. Uh, so we started out thinking this year was going to be one way. <laughs> oh, boy, how quickly things change. Um, yeah. so we're going we're gonna to have ourselves a discussion about all of the different pieces of that. And so we hope that you tune in uh, next Tuesday at 11. Also, please be excited. Uh, currently in the works is the great big government, the great big grizzly house party. And we'll be putting out information about that. But needless to say, we're going to be creating a space for us to get together over music and dance and party and enjoy each other's company virtually. Uh, everyone is invited to participate, but specifically and especially the students. Uh, so please be aware to, to your media for that. And last but not least, and certainly very important, SGA elections are happening. Please review the Gutman Instagram account. Please review the Gutman SGA account. Please review the Gutman Facebook, the Gutman website, the Gutman Twitter. We're bringing to you all the information and all the ways that you can get involved and vote for the next student representatives. Uh, we want you to be a part of that. Uh, next week is the student award ceremony and recognition, academic recognition. That's on Thursday, May 14th. Uh, so we want you to be a part of that. Uh, you should have received emails already. Um, and that's it. Yep. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody in the chat, we hope you had as much fun as we did. Uh, we'll see you next week, Tuesday. Same bad time, same bad channel. Ciao for now.